This verse of Guran Goranga, eight days of our Brahman of Prakrama have passed mm, so smoothly and successfully. And today all devotees have visited many places, beginning with Ravel. Ravel is the Janmastali or the birthplace of Srimati Radhika, who is Mahabhav Suru, the embodiment of the highest train. She was Vrishabhanu Maharaj, he went to the Jamuna very near to his house there and he found a very beautiful baby upon a hundred petal lotus and brought her home and put her in the lap of Kirti Damaya. So Radhika appeared there and Krishna, he appeared in Gokul. We have heard how Nad Rishi, after seeing Krishna's birth festival, he was wandering here and there and gradually he came to Rao and had the darshan of Srimati Radhika. In some cultures, in other days of Lord Bhama, then Radhika takes her birth in Varsana. But in this particular kalpa, Srimati Radhika appeared in Ravo. But we see that Krishna, in every kalpa, he appears in the same place, where Gokul Mahavan. We never hear it's not written in Shasta anywhere that Krishna has ever appeared in Nandagaon. But Radhika, she uh, <coughs> has appeared sometimes Varsana, sometimes in Ravo. So in Shasta we stated Kalpa Bedi Shri Harikata Subhava. That uh, in different Kalpas we see that pastimes are different and therefore we hear different types of Harikata. They're not contradictory, but they're describing uh, different leelas in different ages. So afterwards, devotees. They went to Brahmanda Ghat. There we heard how Nanda Maharaj, he used to take Krishna and Balaram here when they were children to bathe in the Jamuna. And we heard how the boys, uh, small coward boys, they were uh, playing a, a trick on Krishna and saying, how can you be the son of Madhya Yashoda because you're so black and your brother is white. So Krishna was crying and went to and complained to his mother and to pacify him Nadia Shoda took a vow in front of um, Lord Narayan, the Srila of Lord Narayan, that, oh, you have definitely come from my womb, you are certainly my son. And then Krishna was pacified. In this place, the boys, they went and complained to Nadia Shoda that Krishna was eating uh, soil. So Nadia Shoda, she was uh, uh, annoyed and she quickly came and demanded to look inside Krishna's mouth. And there she saw the entire universe. And she also saw herself there. So upon seeing this, she became bewildered and thought that uh, uh, her son may be uh, haunted by a ghost or, or anything. So to protect him, she called the Brahmanas and performed the Abhishek of Krishna with cow dung and cow urine. And then she was pacified. So then the devotees went to Gokul. In Gokul there are many pastimes in pastime places. The Yamalajun Bhantan Lila Stali, the place where Krishna delivered the Yamal Arjun trees. Nearby is Nanda Kup. Also the appearance place of Yoga Maya, the place where uh, Krishna liberated Shakatasur and Trinavarta, the place of Krishna and Balaram's Nam Sanskar, the place of Damodar Lila, Srila Sanatana Goswami's Bhajan Stali, the place where Krishna's Jata Karma was uh, performed. Nearby Brahmanda Ghat there is a place Chintaharan Mahadev also. So in the house of Nan Maharaj there are 84 huge pillars and nearby are the houses of Nanda Maharaj's brothers such as Upananda Abhinanda and others. Close by to that temple there are the deities of Rohini Maya and Vasudev Maharaj. Vasudev Maharaj also came to Gokul Mahavan and he brought Krishna there and exchanged him for the girl who had taken birth from the womb of Nadi Yashoda. Then devotees, they went to Dalji. So many people think that Dalji is Baldev Prabhu's birthplace. This is incorrect. Baldev Prabhu appeared in Gokul Mahavan in the same place where Krishna appeared but uh, some days earlier. 15 days earlier. So, Baldev, he is the Adisatri Deita of the forests 
on the eastern side of the Jamuna. There are five Pradhan or prominent forests on the eastern side of the Jamuna. Badravan, Belvan, Bandirvan, Lohavan and Mahavan. And there are some Upavans there also such as Makvan. So uh, except for Bandirvan, where there is a prominence of Shimati Radhika and the Lila of Sringaras, in the other forests on that side of the Jamuna, Valdev Prabhu is the Adisati Devata of those places and there's prominence of Krishna's Cow grazing, pasta, cow grazing pastimes with his friends. <clears throat> so in Dauji, in this town, there is a deity of Baldev Prabhu. And this deity was established 5,000 years ago by the great grandson of Sri Krishna, that is uh, Bhajranab. So also in uh, that temple, not openly, not next to Baldev Prabhu, but hidden in a corner, there is a deity of Revati. So sometimes in Braja Mandal you see deities of Baldev and Revati side by side. But this should not be, this worship is not authentic because Revati did not perform pastimes in Braja Mandal with Balaram Prabhu. Balaram left Braja Mandal before the time of his marriage. So if you worship Baldev with a Shakti Revati in Braja Mandal, then it will be Rasabhas. So Srila Gurudev commented that Bhajanab has established the, the temple of um, Dalji. Baldev is there, uh, but uh, Gurudev is of the opinion that Bhajanab would not have established Revati there and in the same temple because of Rasabhas Dosh. A question has come. As per the first sloka of Manasiksha, Sujan should be considered Madhyam Bhagavat. However, what if the Sujan is Siddha in their Bhajan Sadhan? Are they still to be considered Madhyam? Don't it depend on the level of the Bhajan one as it, as that? Sujan. What is Sujan? Charo Vaishno Sampradayo. Or Unki Sakhao. Hearing yesterday's lecture, the question was posed to Srila Gurudev. We heard yesterday that Gostale Su Sujane Bhusuragane. One should have, give up all pride and have unprecedented attachment. For Gosta Aleishu, it means the residents of Brada, such as the associates of Radha and Krishna, and also those associates who come in this world with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the followers of those, the associates of Mahaprabhu, such as Rupa Goswami and others, they are called the Param Bhagavata, mm-hmm. Uttam Bhagavata. Then the Sujan, Sujan are the, refers to the Vaishnavas of other Sampradayas, the followers, the Asritjan of Madhvacharya, Ramanujacharya, Nimbaditya and Vishnu Swami, they are to be considered Madhyam Bhagavat. So now the question comes, if a person in another Sampradaya has attained Siddhi, perfection, and they are fully realized, then why should they be considered Madhyam Bhagavata? Hmm? Surely they are Uttam Adhikari, so they should be considered Uttam Bhagavata, this question may come. So in reply to this, Srila Gurudev explained that there may be Siddha in their own mood and they may be residing in Braj, but they are not residing in Braj Surupata, that means in their Swarup. By Swarup they are not residing in Braj. Physically in their body they are residing in, in Braja. But internally by their mood they cannot touch the Chinmaya Dham of Braj. Hmm? Parakya Bhava Jahe Braja Te Prachar. There in Braja is Unnata Ujjwala Rasa. This is flowing everywhere in the Chinmaya Dham of Braja. So, Ramanuja Charya, Nimbadich and others, the, and those who are doing Braja and following them, they may be Siddha. They may be perfect, but they are Siddha, they are perfect in their own mood. They are not perfect in the mood of the 
transcendental chin, uh, Chinmay Braja. Therefore, they can never engage in the Unnat Ujjwala Upasana, the service of Radha and Krishna according to the actual mood of transcendental Braj, that is the Parakya Madhurya Rasa Bhakti. Mm -hmm. So, though they are perfect in their own mood, they don't have Braja Bhav. So, in comparison to those who are called Gostala Ishu, uh, that means one should have attachment for the residents of Goshta. Mm? In comparison to the real residents of Goshta, such as the associates of Radha and Krishna and Agha Swamis, they have been considered Madhyam Bhagavat. Any doubt more? Maharaj to say? Bolo? Dear Krishna Guru is raising the question that Actually, those who are perfect in their own sampradaya, they are called Uttam Adhikari. This is true. So, if we will say that they are Madhyam Bhagavat, this is only a relative opinion from those who are situated in the, uh, the sampradaya of, of Sri Chaitanya Mahapu, Gaudiya Sampradaya. This is their relative opinion. So, are they really the Madhyam Bhagavat or Uttam Bhagavat? So, good every replied by saying, what sampradaya are you in? Mm -hmm. So if you are in the follower of Rupa Goswami, then you have to see according to the vision of the followers of Rupa Goswami, and this is the correct vision. Mana Shiksha So now Srila Gurudev is explaining the second verse of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami's Mana Shiksha according to the commentary of Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur. The second verse, The Dharmam na Dharmam Shutikana Niruktam Kilakuru Vajay Radha Krishna Pachura Paricharyam Hirtanu Sachi Sunam Nandiswarapati Sutatve Guru Param Mukunda Prestatve Svarapadam Ajasam Nanumana Here, Srila Raghunath Thakur Swami is saying, Oh my dear mind, hmm? whatever has been described, in the Sruti, in the Vedas, in regard to Dharma and Adharma, that means religious activities, pious activities, and on the other hand, impious or sinful activities. Don't do any of these things. Rather, one should accept that Radha and Krishna are the ultimate limits or ultimate conclusion of all the Vedas and simply worship them. Hmm? <coughs> One should engage uh, in abundant, intimate service to the lotus feet of Shishi Radha Krishna Yuga. And one should think that Sachinandan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who, is, who has appeared in this world with the mood and complexion of Shimati Radhika, he is non-different from Nanda Nanda. He is Krishna himself. Keeping this in mind, one should worship Radha and Krishna. And also, one should always remember that Sri Gurudev is the most very dear associate of Sri Mukunda. So this is the general translation of the second verse of Manasiksha. Now, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his Bhajan Dharpana Digdashi Nibriti, Bhajan Dharpana commentary, is explaining the meaning of this verse. In the first verse of Manasiksha, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami prayed to his mind, Please, completely give up all types of pride and do one-pointed, engage in one-pointed service to Shishi Radha Krishna Yuga. So, if someone will do this, then several doubts may come in one's mind. How is it possible to have one-pointed exclusive shelter and service to Radha and Krishna? Why? Because in this world, if you give up nature karma and naimitic karma, that means daily and occasional duties which are prescribed in the Vedas, then how will you maintain your life? You cannot maintain your life even for a second without observing 
uh, the uh, duties which are given in the Shastra. And furthermore, if one will do one pointed service to the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna, then what about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He has appeared in this age of Kali hmm, as a, to distribute praying. If you will take shelter exclusively of Radha and Krishna, in what way should one accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Hmm? Then, that's the second doubt. And then the third doubt is that if one is to engage all the time in the service of Radha and Krishna, then in what way should one render service to Guru or remember the lotus feet of Sri Guru? So, in order to uh, give an answer to these three questions which automatically arise on the basis of the instruction given in the first verse, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami Pad has composed this second verse. So he's giving the answer. First of all, in brief, mm. <coughs> one should uh, not perform the pious and impious activities mentioned in the Vedas. What does this mean? It means that in the scripture, some rules and regulations, what you should do and what you should not do, have been given. But for whom have they been given? There are two types of people. The first category is called the Agya, ignorant people. And the second category they are called the Vigya, learned people, realized people. So for those who are Agya, ignorance, they have no understanding actually of what is their Swarup. They will have to very carefully discriminate between pious and impious activities. <coughs> Otherwise, they will go down and they will have to suffer. And if they'll follow the path of piety, they'll be gradually raised up to the platform of Sattva Gun and gradually develop some knowledge and discrimination. So the rules and regulations given in Shruti, it is for them. It is not for those who are Vigya. Vigya means those who are aware of their constitutional identity. So for them, they should simply engage constantly in the service of Radha and Krishna. So, this uh, first line of the verse does not say that you should not perform any external duties in life. But rather, one can perform them. But one should always do it internally meditating on the service of Radha and Krishna. One should never uh, do anything for oneself, but rather performing one's duties without attachments and in a mood of service to Sri Krishna, one can accept the duties whereby one's life will be maintained. If one will not maintain one's life in an in appropriate way, then one will not be able to do bhajan. So, this first line does not forbid the performance of activities. Srila Gurudev gave an example that it may be that one's, for, one's parents may pass away and then you have to offer oblations for your deceased forefathers. So, you can do it. Uh, but you should do everything in a mood of service. For example, someone may go to Gaya to offer Pinda, but going there, then they want to have the darshan of the footprints of Gadara Pandits, and in, the, in this... Gadara Padapadma. There is a Padodak Tirtha in Gaya, Sri Chichang Mahapur. Also they can go to Isar Puripad and Madhavan Puri Bhajan. So, in this way, it appears that they are doing karmas, but actually everything they are doing with the meditation, connected with the ultimate goal of their life. So, this is the answer to the first question. Then the second question, Sachi Sunam Nandishwara Patisa Sattvai Guru Bharam. If one will engage in exclusive service to Radha and Krishna, then in what way is it to accept Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So, one, one idea may be there, and that is that anyway, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is non different from Radha and Krishna. So, if I just worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then one is automatically worship Radha and Krishna. This idea may come. Otherwise, another idea may come. Anyway, Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna, so I'll worship Radha and Krishna, and perhaps I should separately do worship of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, in answer to this, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami said, Sachi Sunam Nandishwara Pati Sutatwe Guru Bharam. Hmm? One should accept Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
as one's bhajan shiksha guru, in the form of a guru. So, the appropriate worship of guru is what? To follow his instructions. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, Braja Radha Krishna Seva Manasa Kribe. He said, chant the names of Krishna, worship Radha and Krishna. So, the worship of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how? By following his instructions. This is best worship of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Otherwise, one may worship Mahaprabhu, but how? Without paid bhav. That means one should not see any difference whatsoever between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna. And when one's service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu becomes mature, yeah, then he will reveal his surup as Radha and Krishna and one will be engaged in exclusively in their service. This has been described by Srila Bhaktino Thakur in his Navdi Dham Mahatmya. Okay. So the, the final line of um, this verse is remaining. Srila Gurudev will explain that now. Guru De Krishna, in what way is one to accept Sri Guru? So here, Mukunda Prasta Tueshmara Parama Jasam Narumana, always remember that Guru Dev is very, very dear associate of Mukunda. Mukunda means Sri Krishna, who gives one liberation from this world. So, Therefore, in the Pranam Mantras to our Guru Varga, we say, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale. Who is Guru? He is Krishna Prashta, a very dear associate of Sri Krishna. So, it's very important that the disciple should always maintain the conception that my Guru is Nitya Parikar, an eternal associate of Radha and Krishna. And what kind of asso eternal associate? He is, or the Priya Saki, a very near and dear maid servant of Srimati Radhika. So at the time of serving Radha and Krishna, disciples should always keep this conception in his mind. So, although this, in Shastra it is stated, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Acharya Mang Vijaniyat, Krishna said, you should know that the Acharya is my very self. Hmm? So this does not mean that Guru is Bhagavan. Hmm? So, many people, there are many movements today where they say, Guru is Bhagavan. If you have worshipped the Guru, then you have worshipped Bhagavan because Guru is Bhagavan. Guru is Paramatma. So this, I, this is a great offense to worship Guru thinking that he is God. On the other hand, there are many people who direct, directly worship Krishna and they don't accept the Guru and they don't give respect to Guru. So Gurudev explains, this is also offensive. So they, those who think that Guru is God or those who neglect Guru, both of them are actually Gnostic. They are atheists. They, not, they do not accept the Vedic conclusion. So what is the conception of Guru? Sakshad haritvaina samasta shastre ukta satabhavyata eva sadvihi Kintu Prabhuya Pri Evatasya Vande Guru Si Charnaravindam. Guru his, has all the qualities and should be respected as one gives respect to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the reason this respect is given to him is because Kintu Prabhuya Priya, he is extremely dear associate of Sri Krishna. In this mood, one should worship Sri Guru. One should accept the, uh, this conception of Sri Guru. So in Hari Bhakti Vilas, there's a verse there, Katamantu Gurum Pujam Tatasta Gadma Marchanam. Krishna himself said, First you should worship Guru, and after that you should worship me. If you will follow this process, then definitely you will attain perfection. And if you neglect this, then all your worship is fruitless. It will not give any results. So first of all, one should remember Lotus Feet of Guru, and worship Guru, and then so, Radha and Krishna under his guidance. There's another verse in the uh, Jayadakyan Samhita. There is stated, Shoshayati Ravina Poshayati. That there's a lotus flower. And when the sun shines, the sun, it, it causes the lotus flower to blossom. 
as long as the lotus flower is situated in the water. But if you take the lotus flower out of the water, then the rays of the sun will not cause the lotus flower to blossom, but rather they cause the lotus flower to dry up and wither away and become destroyed. So in this analogy, the lotus flower is the living entity. And the rays of the sun, that is Krishna's mercy. And the water, that is Guru. In other words, if one is in the shelter of Guru, then Krishna's, Krishna, His mercy will cause one to blossom. But if one has not taken shelter of, of Guru, and he will try to approach Krishna, oh, then he must be ruined. Tomorrow, we'll go to Akro Ghat. There, Krishna, he came with the bridge buses. And they took bath in Jamuna, and Krishna gave them a darshan of his transcendental abode, which Golok. Golok is the vaibhav of Goku. There is a mood of opulence. Hmm? So the bridge bases, seeing this abode, they were not satisfied. They became disturbed, and then again they went under the water, and Krishna brought them back to Goku. So in this place also Akura. He took bath and had darshan of Krishna and Balaram in the form of uh, Narayan and Anantadev in the water of Jamuna. And also we we'll go to one place nearby that is called Batrol. Batrol is a place where the wives of the Yagic Brahmanas, they came and bought many preparations to offer to Krishna. Especially they bought some rice mixed together with yogurt. This is very nice. Krishna likes this so much. He's not so interested in roti because it's dry. So he likes rice mixed together with yogurt. This has also been mentioned in Bhagavatam. No midjite brabapase tadidambaraya gunjavatam samparas pichala sanmokaya. And Vishanavetram is Krishna is carrying rice and yogurt in his left hand when Lord Brahma saw him. So at that time, the wives of the Brahmanas. They would make so many preparations, they were supposed to give to the husbands who were performing sacrifice. But they took everything and they offered to Krishna and Balaram. And they saw how beautiful Krishna was there, as described in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shamam Hiranya Paridim Banamalya Baha, in these verses. So, uh, tomorrow, anywhere? So and then, after having darshan of those places, all devotees will return and have darshan and hear the glories of these places from Srila Gurudev in the evening. Also, kalli hai par class hoga. In morning there will be class here and after class we will go to Bhatra. <laughs> yes, breakfast not here. Oh, Jagya Patni has arranged everything and they were waiting for you. Uh, Gurudev said that uh, Bhatro comes from the word Bhat. Bhat means rice. So from this uh, preparation of rice mixed with yogurt, the name has come Bhatro. <laughs> etc. In this verse, Sri Satak Rishi is praying, Hey Dev, 
Your face has very beautiful dark complexion and it is surrounded by your soft curling locks of black hair which are tinged with red. And your face is beautified by your lips which appear to be red and soft like bimba fruits. May that face of yours, which is kissed again and again by Mother Yasoda, be manifest within my heart always. I have no need of any other benediction. This is the general meaning of the verse. Now the explanation of Srila Sanatan Goswami part. When one remembers the, Shri, the Shri Bigraha or Sri Krishna, then the face of Sri Krishna is prominent. So such a Rishi is saying, Oh, when will your beautiful face manifest in my heart at the time of meditation? Here Krishna's face is compared to a lotus flower because his face is blossoming and it is Paramananda, full of joy and rasamai, full of rasa. And just as a bumblebee, many bumblebees, they surround a lotus flower, so his locks of hair surround his face. Here the word Gopya refers to Madhya Shoda, or alternatively, it may suggest that Shrimati Radharani is repeatedly kissing the face of Sri Krishna. So in this verse, the lips of Sri Krishna have been compared to bimba fruits. If a bimba fruit is already ripened, then it becomes very soft. Uh, so soft, if you touch it, it will break. <coughs> so, Krishna's lips, they appear to be so soft and reddish. So then, in the next verse, Sri Satchivat Rishi prays, Namo Deva Damada Ananta Vishnu Prasida Prabhuduka Jalabdi Magnam. So he said, Namo means, I offer my obeisances to you. Deva. Dev means uh, your qualification is that you have a brilliantly radiant transcendental form. Damodar. By uttering the name Damodar, Satyavat Rishi is re remembering how Krishna has the quality of Bhakta Vatsalya. That means he is uh, extremely merciful and conquered by the love of his devotees. Namodeva Damodar Ananta. Ananta means you are mm, uh, possessed of unlimited, inconceivable powers. The Ananta Vishnu. Oh Vishnu means you are my Ishwara. You are my master. So please be satisfied with me. I am suffering. So kindly show your mercy upon this wretched person. What mercy do you want? I want the mercy by which you will appear before my very eyes. So, as Satchavat Rishi was offering his prayers, first he was praying to see Krishna in his heart at the time of meditation. But now his mood has intensified and he's praying to have direct darshan of Sri Krishna. Hmm? Therefore, if one wants to get the direct darshan of Sri Krishna, there's only one method to attain it. That is Nam Sankirtanam. So that is indicated in this verse, in the very verse in which he's praying for a direct darshan of Krishna, he's doing Nam Sankirtanam by calling out the names. Hey Dev, Hey Damodar, Hey Ananta, Hey Vishnu, Hey Prabhu. So in this verse, he says Nama. So he should say Tubyam Namaha. But this word Tubyam, unto you, has been dropped. So Srila Snat Goswami Pad suggests that he has dropped this word because of three, he's giving three reasons. One is a fear. One is out of fear. One is due to respect. And another reason due to Prem Udrek, very the intensity of his love. So here he said, Juka Jalabdi Magnam. Magnam means, I am immersed in Jalabdi, the ocean of what? Duk. So the ocean of Duk, the ocean of suffering, can have two, two meanings. One meaning is the ocean of birth and death in this world. And the other meaning of 
of suffering is, I am suffering because I am bereft of your darshan. Hmm? So here he said, hmm? I am very fallen and wretched, atidhin. I am completely destitute. So here, what does it mean to be wretched? <coughs> One meaning is, hmm? I am sadhu sangha vihin, devoid of the association of pure devotees. Hmm? If someone in this world is undergoing many difficulties and many calamities, but they have sadhu sangha, then their life is perfectly auspicious. But if a person is prosperous in this world, but bereft of sadhu sangha, then his life is completely inauspicious. So, in this very humble mood, Satchavat Rishi is praying, O oh Krishna, be pleased with me and sprinkle your mercy upon me.
but with 400 more. He was thinking, how is this possible? That I've just left them on the chariot, and now that I'm performing my honey, that they're here. So he came out of the Yamuna, and he went to the chariot, and he saw that Krishna Bhade, that they were still there. And then he went back in the Yamuna, and the second time he went and dipped in, then he saw Ananta Shesh with so many hoods. And on Ananta Shesh, he saw the Supreme Lord laying on the body of Ananta Shesh. He became so overwhelmed. And there, again he came out, and then he saw Krishna Balde. And Krishna asked, What is, why is it that you're looking so astonished? It seems that you've seen something very wonderful. And then Akura, he said, Oh, having seen you, there's nothing more wonderful to be seen. Because all wonderful activities, they're only manifestations coming from you. So, as has already been explained, that at this place, when Christian Balram, they reached here, then, when Akura carried, carried on to Mathura, then Krishna and in their Vrindavan forms, they returned back to Vrindavan. It's stated, Vrindavana Prithyakya, Padam Ekam Vigachami. That Krishna, he never takes one step out of Vrindavan. So you showed another Krishna, he returned back to Vrindavan. And Madhuras Krishna, then he went on to Mathura with Baladeva and Akura. Also, as I explained that at this point, <laughs> that that, that Rohini that Rohini Nandan Balade, who is who is who is, he went back also. He went back to Vrindavan. <laughs> And that, <laughs> because Krishna in Vrindavan, he has his first expansion, Baladev. So, the expansion, the expansion of Rohini Baladev, uh, he went to Mathura. And the original Baladev, he came back to Vrindavan. So Krishna Vrindavan from Vrindavan, they went back to Vrindavan and the expansions went to Mathura. So, also Gurudev has explained that at this place, during Ekadashi, in the night time, going into Gwadashi, then Nanda Maharaj came and he took bath in Yamuna. But because it was night time, and one of the um, assistants of Runa, he considered it to be inauspicious. Then he took Nanda Baba and he took him to the kingdom of Runa. Immediately, those men who had gone with Nanda Baba, they were crying, Krishna, Krishna, oh help, Krishna help. Krishna who had been laid in his bed, immediately he came to this place. Then he went into the Yamuna and then he went to the kingdom of Runa. Varuna Dev. There, Varuna Dev worshipped him very awkwardly. Nanda Baba was amazed to see that how is it that my little son, that he's been worshipped by Varuna. And then he could understand that my son, he's not just my darling little boy, but he's actually that supreme personality of God. After, when he went back and he told the bridge buses, the bridge buses, they were also speaking that we've heard that Krishna, that he's just like Narayan. But now we're hearing that he's not just like Narayan, but actually he is Narayan. So Krishna asked, what benedictions would you like? At that time, some asked that we would like to see that same form that we showed to Nanda Baba. We would like to see the same thing. And then in this part, then Krishna he took them into the Yamuna, and then they were able to see his um, by good the planets. So, here in this pastime, we can see that though the Prishbasis, they never think that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
But in this instant, instant, they were understanding that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And though seeing Him in that state, but still their mood of intimacy, it was ne never shrunk at all. But rather, uh, their appreciation of Krishna's original form, it increased. On the other side, when Arjuna, he saw Krishna, and he could understand that Krishna is that supreme Lord, immediately he knelt down and he offered so many prayers that acted very, um, I've acted in such an intimate way with you, and in this way I've made so many offenses, and in this way he offered so many prayers. But the bridge passes, their mood towards Krishna is never ever affected. Also, it's explained that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that when he came to Vrindavan, that he would also come to this place of Purgat, and he would spend the night here, and then in the morning, dawn time, then he would go to Indritala and there absorb um, in the mood of Krishna or absorb himself in the mood of Srimati Radhika that he would engage in um, chanting the holy names throughout the day. Signs of this place, Brahmagrad, and uh, there is another place nearby called Bhatro. We will go there. That at that place was the past time where Krishna had uh, received the offerings of the Brahmanis, the wives of the sacrificial Brahmanas. <clears throat> so, in brief, we're telling this past time. When the coward boys came to this area here, he somehow. Lunches, which were usually sent to them by their mothers, had not arrived, they were, had gone to a different place. So the coward boys told to Krishna, Oh Krishna, uh, you are so expert in killing so many demons, but we have one demon within our stomach, and it is giving us so much pain and so much difficulty, and so much hunger we have. So please help us cure this problem. And then Krishna told them, He said, You should go nearby to this place. Because very near to here, there are some sacrificial brahmanas who are performing sacrifices. And there are so many preparations that they, they have prepared for this sacrifice. So, in the name of my uh, Balaramji, uh, and also in my name, you should go there, and you should beg from them on my behalf that they should deliver to you these foodstuffs. And so then, the Calvert boys very happily went to the place where the yogic brahmanas were performing their yogyas. They were very much uh, absorbed in doing all the sacrifices, in preparing the yajna arena, and they were about to begin their yajna. So when the coward boys came, they informed the brahmanas, Oh, we are coming on behalf of Krishna and Balaram, who are very near to here, and we are requesting that you will please kindly give us the foodstuffs that you are preparing for the sacrifice. We are very hungry, so please. Deliver this to us and we will bring this to Krishna and Balaram. But the uh, Brahmanas, they ignored them. They did not even answer yes or no. They just simply continued on with their sacrifice, so absorbed. So then the coward boys returned back to Krishna and they explained what had happened. And then Krishna smiled and he said, yes, this is the nature of going for begging. Sometimes someone will you be successful and you will receive something. Sometimes you will not get anything. So and this is the nature of these kind of persons. They are not interested in the ultimate goal of life. They are very absorbed in the external uh, rituals. So, but you should again return to that area and you should not approach the brahmanas, but you should approach their wives. Because their wives are very great devotees. And they have, they have prepared so many nice preparations, and if you go there, surely they will be very enthusiastic to deliver these foodstuffs to you. So then the coward boys again, they went there to where the Brahmanis were, and they approached the Brahmanis, and they informed them, yes, Krishna and Balaram have sent us, and they are nearby to this place, and they are waiting 
for us to bring these foodstuffs. And the Brahmanis, they became very overwhelmed with joy and enthusiastic. They had cultivated the process of hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna and his name, form, qualities and pastimes. And they had not yet seen Krishna with their own eyes. So now this opportunity came that they could go and they could not only have the darshan of Krishna, but they could also render service to Krishna by bringing these sacrificial offerings. So then, very enthusiastically, they gathered together all of these offerings, which were uh, very luxurious grains and, and preparations made from ghee and very tasteful preparations. And then they began to go very quickly, moving into the forest. And some of the, and their husbands were also very much averse to this, but they ignored everyone and everything, and they simply ran into the forest with the, carrying these offerings in their hands. And when they were led to that place where Krishna and Balaram were, they came upon uh, the scene where Krishna was standing and moving along in the forest, very beautifully and very attractive, with his cowherd boyfriends near to him. And when they saw this sight of Krishna, this darshan of Krishna, they, he entered within their heart through their eyes. And then they, they uh, observed the scene and they said, Shyamam hiranya paritim manamalya barha datu pravala natadesha manu vratamse vinyasta hastam itarena dunana mamjam karanot palala katapola mukhabja hasam. It was described so beautifully how Krishna was looking. He had very beautiful lotus flower in his hands, whirling a lotus flower with a beautiful smile on his lotus face, his locks of curling hair coming down on his cheeks. He was dressed in very beautiful garments, so brightly shining golden garments, and his color, shyam colored, like a very beautiful blue rain cloud, and, and, and decorated with a manamalia forest garland, with sprigs of forest flowers, and so many beautiful decorations. And when they saw Krishna in this attractive way, he entered within their hearts, and they embraced him deeply within their hearts. And now, they truly felt like they had achieved the goal of their life. But Krishna smiling at them, he inquired from them, how can I benefit you, and how can I serve you, that you have come all this way, rejecting your husband? Uh, and then the brother is told, we want to stay here with you. We want to always serve your Lord and we want to constantly have you within our heart. The Christian told them uh, is that actually you should follow the, the rituals of the Vedas. You are the married to the wives of the Brahmanas. And it will be suit your reputation and also my reputation. So you should return there to your husbands. And the Brahmanas, uh, they followed this instruction of Krishna, although they wanted to stay with Krishna, but they followed this instruction and they went back. Even though they were reluctant because they thought that their husbands had now rejected them and they had no place to go back to, and they told Krishna like this, but he said, no, when we go back, then everything will be all right, and this will accept you back, and their whole mood will be changed. So when the Brahmanis returned back to their home, and all the sacrificial brahmanas saw them. Now there was a change of heart within them. They began to understand and realize that they had made a very grave mistake, not properly understanding who is Krishna, who is Bhaura, that they are actually the supreme part of Brahma themselves, who have descended on this earth and are, are, are masquerading as human beings and performing pastimes just like little cowherd boys. But they understood that their wives were so fortunate, their Brahmani wives were vastly more fortunate than themselves, because they understood who was Krishna Bhaura, and they gave up all the uh, formal rituals of Vedic society to run to them. So they began to condemn themselves, spy on us, spy on us, all of our Vedic learning, all of our sacrificial performances. All of our so-called rituals of Vedic knowledge, all of our uh, twice-born activities, these are all useless because we could not recognize the Supreme Lord when He Himself came like this. So in this way, this glorious pastime of the lives of the Brahmanis who uh, perform sacrifices, now they achieve the goal of their life, that they were able to serve the lotus feet of Krishna and Balaram. And there is a very important purport in here to understand that these Brahmanis 
they were, if we compare them to the, uh, the behavior of the Braja Gopis, because the same thing, when the Braja Gopis had heard Krishna's flute call, to call them to the place of Vamshivat and to dance Ras Lila, at first Krishna was also telling them to return to their homes. But the Braja Gopis, although they heard Krishna's uh, discussion and arguments, they themselves defeated all of his arguments, and they did not return home. And, but these Brahmanis, they returned home, and therefore they had some identification with their society and family. So in the future, uh, the charges have explained that in the future, they would have a greater opportunity to get the association of the Braja Gopis, and to understand their relationship with Krishna, because only by following in the footsteps of the Braja Gopis, only by having the identification of a Gopi and understanding that Krishna is a Gopa, only by this can one enter within Krishna's cowherd pastimes within the forest of Raja Vrindavan. So the wives of the Brahmanis, they attain their perfection, and in future life, then they would, by performing bhajan and getting the association of the Braja Gopis, then they would one day be able to attain the service of the lotus feet of Krishna in the mood of Gopi Bha. So we bow down at the, at the dust of the, uh, this auspicious place in Braja, and we pray that one day our hearts will also be attracted to Krishna in the same way, and that we may follow in the footsteps of the Braja Gopis of Vrindavan. Vansha Kalpataru Vashya Vipasa Nudei Vashya Vipasa Nudei Vashya Vipasa Nudei Vashya Vipasa Nudei Vashya Thank <laughs> you.